are Stephen Anderson's parents divorced? Um, doing some research here for an upcoming video uh, on the whole Stephen Anderson cult thing because it's really grown a lot since uh, I started exposing it way many 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 years ago and uh, it's really getting bigger and bigger and it is a dangerous movement definitely I'm going to be demonstrating that and uh, I was going to bring out a lot of this stuff in, a, in one big video but I thought you know a lot of this is just too serious to just you know bring it out later and I, it just needs to come out right away so I'm going to be bringing out quite a few videos over the next few days and things um, just incredible stuff uh, again a lot of people have divorces a lot of people uh, you know, I deal a lot with brethren that, that have gone through divorce and, and it's you know and bad situations and you know everything and I'm not going to judge people if they've gone through divorce or if they have divorced relatives or whatever else but when you have a guy like Steven Anderson who's just so vehemently you know adulterers should be killed uh, divorce is not an option and then you see that his own parents are divorced and it just well, I'm not going to talk about that uh, it's a double standard. It's a double standard of a lost man. So I saw this guy's video here, and just show a little bit here. It's kind of funny. He shows the thing of Donny Romero preaching against marijuana use, and then later on, of course, he's <laughs> taking it himself, and probably taking it at the time he was preaching. So just look at a little of this. It's kind of funny. I think that's something that you know your his wife probably found out, and then as a result, that's when he just ratted him out. Not only that, it's considered cool, and we'll get to that in a little bit. All mind-altering drugs prevent you from being sober. Does God have to specifically make a verse for every single type of drug under the sun? Does he have to have a verse that says, don't smoke weed, <coughs> Isaiah chapter 5 now. Do you know where you could go? Do you know where you'd have to go to get marijuana and to get pot and weed? If, you, if it was a, literally, if it was a real prescription drug, do you know where you'd have to go to get it? You'd have to go to a pharmacy. But you don't go to a pharmacy, you go to a stinking drug dealer that's got a sign. That's like saying... <laughs> Speaking from personal experience, apparently. <laughs> so I take booze for medicinal purposes. Do you go to a pharmacy? No, I just go down to the store. But you got to get the card. They got to say that it's okay for you to get it. Look, anybody knows anybody can walk in there and get that card. I, they have doctors lined up that they're wicked too. And they'll just give you a card. You can go, my back hurts. You can say all these things that they can't really test for. My back hurts and I want to go. If you go to these, uh, I forgot what they call them, dispensaries, you can walk in there and say, I don't have a card, but I need one. And they will give you a list of doctors that you... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, it's okay to uh, get prescription opiates by uh, standing armies being commissioned to go blow up brown people in order to steal their crops, right? When Oxy was first... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, he's right. You know, you go into third world countries, brown people, you know, and um, you go in there and you, you basically send the military in and make them, you know, grow heroin and, you know, cocaine and the whole thing. America's been doing that for, for years and years and years, many, many years, financing the black ops, you know, type of world and whatever else. I mean, just, <laughs> but, you know, that that's okay. You can, you know, you, you shouldn't do illicit drugs, but you can do prescription drugs. That's important, you know, and, and I think, you know, if Romero was saying that, that he's probably doing both, you know, marijuana and popping pills as well. But uh, go forward here, uh, right about here, I think, is when he starts talking about this thing. I was watching the video and he said this, and I thought, what? So here it is, the thing about Anderson's parents being divorced. Because then they would have to address the double standard of Stephen Anderson's own parents divorced going to Verity Baptist Church. Nobody speaks to that. Nobody has, nobody has uh, uh, addressed that for me either. Because then you would have to basically get rid of, I don't know, 25% to 33% of the entire congregation, bro. So that's... So I heard that and I went, huh? So I wrote down here. At 3.50 or so, you spoke about Pitt, Steve, Stephen Anderson's parents being divorced and attending Verity Baptist Church. What is your proof of this? And he says, my actual own personal attendance at the church. So he's a former member there, being an usher and potential pastor in the movement. Are you actually doing her by the way? I out loud. And he goes into here saying, yeah. So uh, I thought, that's crazy. So I went and I checked out Anderson's uh, blog thing here. I just did a search. And it says about my mom, Susan Anderson. Right there's the name. Okay. And you get down here and there's a picture of them. 
and there she is and there's his dad dad and mom but here this is a uh, 2018 October 2nd 2018 his grandmother uh, died and he says about um, his dad's mom passed away and here is Anderson's family and it says here left to right Clint Spring dad and Denise okay um, wouldn't this be adultery isn't this a divorce and remarriage that Anderson so vehemently stands against and yet he's standing right behind her and just smiling you know um, a little bit of a double standard there you know and it goes down here my dad with his four children in birth order from left to right um, what about the mom where's the mom at hmm interesting so again you know and then he talks about the death penalty for adultery here and and his blog thing and he thinks yeah you know we need to do this and righteous government would implement the death penalty uh, where's that at in the Old Testament where does it say anything about a righteous government implementing the death penalty uh, there are certain things that the, it's the congregation that's to take this guy out and stone him with stones that he die and whatever else and they say well we can't we can't enforce the death penalty for adultery because you know we're not allowed to by the government and this is the same guy that says that Christians are going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble and they're going to refuse the mark of the beast they'll disobey the government then but not now what a stinking hypocrite 